just start by reminding us how much art heals, how much it helps us survive a really scary world at the moment. our ninth portfolio. It sounds like we haven't actually done it for very long, but in fact we started in 2007. People come and join the club specifically to do the portfolio because it's been recognised as a powerful process and a wonderful way for people to up the level of their photography. Have a look at the diversity of the work that is in front of on display here from fantastic social simple beautiful minimalist social documents straight through to the most creative and uh, impish set of images where one man challenged artificial intelligence and won okay, my portfolio this year is based on the work of jeffrey smart I enjoy his paintings and I like his ideas of bringing in industrial scenes and making artworks from them. I like the colour and I like the geometric shapes and I just wanted a happy body of work to present. The Brick Pit is down in Sydney Olympic Park and uh, it's a circular elevated walkway. You look down onto a, onto a pond, lake, Last year it was covered in algae and uh, unfortunately that's gone now but when I got these shots the algae was all bright green and the green is what is white in these photos and the black is the streams of water through uh, that the, either the birds are making or the water is flowing through and I quite like the way it's come out, I hope you do. I've been doing uh, black and white and structure photography for many years and I found so many um, possibilities of uh, reducing the uh, environment to black and white, to a uh, structure, to an uh, area, a, a, a picture that doesn't really explain itself. You have to think about it and you have to uh, do a bit of explaining to uh, agree with it and, uh, and come to grips with it. I originally started it because I wanted to study uh, off-camera flash and uh, focus bracketing. And the left-hand panel shows some images where I was using off-camera flash. During the process, I uh, took a few shots with raindrops on flowers. And I thought, gee, they were really interesting. And I found they were so interesting, it really added something to the image, that I made the whole of the right panel is flowers with raindrops which was an accidental discovery during the process. There's a second accidental discovery, and that's how I printed them. During the process of printing them out of Lightroom, I accidentally clicked something that gave me this uh, setup that we've got here, uh, which I thought was different and interesting and I quite liked. I'm Lynn Arnold, and these are my platinum palladium prints of uh, Aram lilies and um, white magnolias and I do them in the platinum palladium process which is fairly time consuming and it's an old process but I thoroughly enjoy working and hand making a photograph. My portfolio this year was what I called uh, trees that give which meant that a tree isn't just a stationary thing sitting there it gives some life to everyone that's around it. It's got a life of its own. And I especially did it to make double pages where they could echo in some form or colour to form a, a whole series of uh, images with the one base is the tree. There's usually no more than two images sandwiched in any image. 
and some of them are straight pictures. So I hope people enjoy looking at it. Thank you. An agave is a plant native to the hot and dry regions of America. It is eye-catching as a single specimen, spectacular in a developed clump, but to a photographer's eye, so much more. A delightful source of changing shapes, patterns, light and shade when inspected through a contortion of camera angles in the early morning light. For, for the last several years, I have been bird photographing, photography of birds. And then I found at the wetlands, not just birds, but the beautiful insects are flying around. So I started photographing insects. And this is the outcome of last several years, my attempt. Particularly tricky part is insects don't stay still. If this is Daisy, my uh, pet cockatoo. Uh, Daisy is actually a he and he's 38 years old. Um, I chose to use Daisy as my portfolio subject because I own him and I could spend plenty of time trying to perfect whatever I could learn from all the feedback I got from the Creative Club and I've achieved it, I think. Art really teaches us, doesn't it? So many things. It teaches us how to be different, how to understand ourselves, how to understand other people. And each of these artworks is a little window into someone else. And that's such a beautiful thing. This is my portfolio of a six day walk that my husband and I did in Tasmania. I took many photos, but when it came time to do the portfolio, it was overwhelming. So I had to, to minimize it. So I did one for each day of the walk, starting the walk there, working through various countryside. It was, it was magnificent. It was, we had all sorts of um, weather. We had spring, autumn, winter. Um, the beauty of that place is astounding. I'm so glad the naturalists have all come together and saved it. Gordon River, I'm sure you all know the Gordon River, but have you seen it in autumn? In autumn, the light shafts at a different angle in Tasmania. It's coming in, oh, about 40 degrees in the early morning. So it is different. It is captured by trees on their rims. And as you can see, I managed to capture it, shafting across the waters, lifting in the mists, capturing the, um, the trees opposite, just the edges of them so that they looked like stars. So to me, it was an amazing experience. This selection of my prints child impressions is based on the remains of the beautiful bushland up at North Head following the devastating fires a few years ago. I went up there looking at the, the skeletal shapes and remains and the interesting textures as well as the vibrant new growth coming up from below. I wanted to capture this and then I found I looked more at the dreamscape of the, of the remainder trying to make a softness yet having the strength of the skeletons and the depth. I went to uh, Flinders Island earlier in the year. The island is full of the most beautiful, along the coastline, the most beautiful rocks, all orange, orange coloured lichen all over them. I really decided to, to do my portfolio in monochrome because I take intimate landscapes rather than the big picture and I thought that the, there was so much texture in the trees around and the dead branches and the rocks that that would be a good way to go. I then decided to print them with the photogravure method and so I was going to hand print them rather than digitally print them. It just gives it a slightly softer, slightly more painterly effect, which, which you know, I like. This series of photos had their origins as a result of a light plane adventure to Cape York. They are presented from a top-down aspect to show the dramatic scenery 
encompassing rivers, valleys, deserts, trees and flora. The colours of the landscape have been enhanced to highlight the abstract concept. Basically, it started with us in COVID doing a lot more walks than we used to do, like everyone else did. But during these walks, I started noticing lots and lots and lots of stuff that people had left behind. And this was with hardly anyone out and about. And so the portfolio is actually a capture of things that have happened since the return from COVID. And basically, it's everywhere. You just have to look. You can see four to five items a day. And this, this collection was taken up in just a single week and it's not everything we saw during that time so pick up your rubbish people and take it with you. This is a set of images that came from the experience I had in Bendelong in the 2019-2020 bushfires. However, they've now been overlaid with a sense of distorted memory and I've achieved this by doing two layers of the images. The first layer is a, a photopolymer photo photogravure printed onto watercolour paper. And the second layer is printed onto Japanese tissue paper. And I have reversed that layer in order to create a strange sort of amalgam of the experience um, to mimic the distortion that memory can bring to our understanding of what's happened in the past. Um, I was hoping that it would be a more positive set of images. I was hoping that it would talk about rejuvenation. However, with what is going on in the world right now with bushfires in Queensland and New South Wales and the horrendous summer that they had in Europe, it's more a warning than a story about rejuvenation and a warning of what will be for us the future if we don't do something about our environment now. I am lifted and inspired by your work. I actually learn by looking at it and I become a better artist. I'm Peter Steele, this is my portfolio. It's motion in the ocean and I just love movement and the motion that is in the ocean, the power and what I've done is I've done long panoramas of it and time exposure so you can see the movement. Thank you. So what I've used is in-camera movement for this, which is to move my, move my camera very, very slightly to get a slightly blurred effect. The idea is to get a very painterly look to the images and then I use textures on top of that to try and yeah, achieve that painterly look and I love being down at the beach. So the whole idea was to start early in the morning, which I did at dawn, but right across all the light situations that you get in a day at a beach and on different days where you might have a hazy day or very, very strong sunshine. So that's about it. In this portfolio, I explored water, that incredible substance that's so vital to our beautiful blue planet. So with macro, flash and continuous lighting, I explored three elements of how water behaves. Firstly, as water drops. Secondly, water as a lens. And thirdly, water in a bubble. I particularly love the abstract nature of water bubbles and the incandescent colours that show up under lights. This is the second time that we've created a joint portfolio together. Our challenge this time was for the three of us to take photos of reflections at the same three locations at the same time and see what would be the result. We were pleasantly surprised to find that we each came up with quite different images and perspectives that still mesh well with each other. As I 
While sitting at home thinking about a topic for my next photography project, I was surrounded by objects collected on my travels to many parts of the world. I realised that to most of my visitors, they're just decorative items. But to me, they have special significance because they evoke rich memories of my travel adventures. I slowly developed a plan to document my travel memorabilia and their associated stories in photographs and words. For my portfolio, I selected objects from 30 countries collected over almost 60 years. It was a nostalgic process for me, resulting in a small book which I hope others find interesting. Uh, well, I, um, I got interested in this when I went on one occasion and I could see there was so much that you could do there of all the different histories, but the one that really grabbed me was the maritime history and for one good reason that my, um, my father-in-law had been on the Queen Mary, uh, which was refurbished there and it was, um, uh, so it was a sort of a connection with that sort of place. Um, I thought after all the incredible noise and colour and uh, and conversation that had gone on there, it was quite remarkable to see it so empty and quiet, but not, not sad really. And um, you found that the people who worked there left with a, certainly a degree of sadness, fear, fear for what was coming for them, but also a great deal of pride. And uh, there were some quotes I used in the book to indicate what a huge amount of pride they had in a job, a job well done. My name is Bruce, my portfolio is on tools. I'm a handyman, but I've also acquired some uh, family tools from my uncle and grandfather who are both builders, and I've done them in black and white to make the feeling of the history of the tools just back in the era when they would have been using them. Um, I have some of the tools uh, mine in the, in the images there, but they're just images that I really like and I've, I've kept them along. So my body of work this year was really um, inspired by my consciousness, my awareness that um, I'm getting older and I've got a whole lot of images that I've taken over the years and nothing has happened with them. And in July, I had a chance to go back to the Tarkine. I went with Len Metcalf and a group of people. That just seemed to me to be the perfect carriage really to work on in book form. So I've tried to find my images of the tarp line that I could put in print. Some of the editing I've done, I've attempted to bring them out so they look more like printmaking, particularly in the, um, this little book here. I love concertina books because they can fold up very small and pop in a box or in a cupboard. So I feel that what I've achieved this year is a small body of work for the tarp line, but in addition, I've got five or six other projects that I've pretty much resolved, which are partway through either commercial books or books like this. I've loved it. Jen and I work together at Willoughby Art Centre. Um, I'm the technician there, and Jen approached me to do this series with her as a way to sort of uh, bridge like multiple of her creative endeavours in one. I didn't want to do creative photography, and I just wanted to do straight. And then I was watching Sam working, and I thought the light bulb went, and I thought it'd be lovely for her to have the book as well. You know, seeing what, something that you do every day through the eye of somebody else really sort of, um, I don't know, enlightens you to things that you don't think about. The beauty of maybe some moments that I get working in that studio that I don't get to see all the time because I'm just, I'm just in it, you know? So yeah, thanks. It was really nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yay.
Well, this is my portfolio. It's a, meant to be an environmental portrait of a photographer and mineralogist um, who's well known in the photography circuit. It has a problem. I started with the image in the centre. Everybody thought it was marvellous. And after that, I didn't have any more ideas. <laughs> but we worked at it and I got a few sort of additional things to put around. So it turned out that he was happy and I'm more or less happy. This is a portfolio about surreal art and I was inspired by some of the surreal photos that I saw and it has been a very big challenge to put it together because I'm using all of my own images to put it together but create an unworldly feeling but with some meaning rather than just some random and uh, that, is the, that is the process. I guess uh, there is your subconscious plays a role somewhere but it is not very clear how, how that manifests itself in the images. The other thing to note is the, the series works as a series and there is a sort of a logic that holds it together and there is a meaning that can come. But my meaning may be completely different than the viewer's meaning of the same things that are there. In this portfolio, I wanted to create a visual representation of a group of the Spanish idiomatic expressions that I have in common the phrase, I have the head. This idiomatic expression describes both the physical and emotional state of the person who used them, and they are very useful in our communication exchange since they express and define a concept quickly and evocative. We use these phrases regularly in our everyday language. I have uh, used a common denominator by using the same image as a base that represents the beginning of the phrase, the phrase. In this case, an image of the head, and I have created the appropriate variations to closely match the image to the phrase that it represents. The use of generative artificial intelligence, or AI, to create images has exploded in the past year. My portfolio experiment was to use generative AI to create images from text and then recreate the images again using photographs of ordinary everyday objects and Photoshop techniques that I hadn't tried before. I was amazed to see the AI application generating so many different images and themes from the same lines of text, which is a quote from the 1982 movie Blade Runner. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. All these moments will be lost in time, like tears in rain. Time to die. Now, I really believe that in this incredible exhibition and in these works of art they challenge us to question what photography is and pushes us into new directions or new understandings. The amount that I learn from all the other photographers who take part just inform my work so wonderfully. It makes me think about my work harder, it makes me question what I'm doing, it really improves my photography out of sight. Well, I've done this nine times now and it is a fantastic process, not only for the participants, but especially for me. So I thank you for that.